Hey, welcome back to A Twin Flame Path. It's me, Jacqueline, again. And today's video is going to be on the higher self. Um, some of you may have experienced this thoroughly, um, at least to a degree thoroughly, because I really don't know when the stopping point of learning for anything I discuss on this channel. So um, I don't know where that ending point is, but some of you may be really familiar. Some of you may have heard about it and don't know. So it's going to be a little bit of a, an overview of what the higher self is and what it means for your twin flame situation and ultimately your twin flame relationship. I would say that the higher self is with you all the time, of course, but you can kind of notice it more. Um, for me, during times of sleeping or meditation, um, things like that, mainly sleeping, like I feel as if twin flames are always giving each other advice and whether it's consciously from 3D to 3D or whether it's 5D to 3D, that's where things tend to start to mesh. So your higher self always wants the best for your twin flame. Your higher self is always with them, always watching them. And sometimes your higher self will make an appearance in dreams, but that's where it tends to sometimes get a little bit more complex because in dreams you have the remnants of purgings, some of them from the past, meaning not so recent times, but most of them are from recent times. They could be from the very present time as well, concerning one of the people's um, self-confidences, maybe self-confidence issues, maybe um, in relation to, they may be in relation to things that the person has questions about, scenarios that they would want to see play out. You might have those type of occurrences happening in your dream like why did that happen it may be something painful it may be something a little scary that you guys go through together but when these things happen in your dreams try to remember the entirety of the dream because sometimes it may seem that it's nightmarish but if you look at the details what i've recently learned is that it's not the case. And I'll give an example of that. Um, I had a dream recently and I was sitting by a window and there was a group of people and it was kind of like a take cover situation and had nothing to do with like current politics or anything like that. In the distance, I remember tapping the person next to me and who they were. I don't know. It could have been my twin, um, but I don't know. And I pointed at the horizon and said, look, that's what's coming this way. And it was like storm clouds, like really I itch my face. My makeup has been making my face itch lately. I think it's because it's winter. Because all of a sudden I get this like sensitive face situation. So, <laughs> ex 
excuse me for that. But um, back to the dream. So I'm pointing to the horizon like, that's coming our way. And I didn't mind in the dream. I remember distinctly feeling like, oh, that's pretty cool because I like dark clouds. I like stormy weather. I like all kinds of weather. So that was cool with me. But then they started getting really intense, like billowing, super dark, super ominous. And I said to the people around me again, you know, like, guys, this is this is intensifying, you know, like I was trying to warn people and they were still kind of like hanging out, um, aware of the situation, but still hanging out. And we weren't like friends. These were people who were like in a rescue situation. And so who just happened to be at the same place together. So then I noticed that there were a lot of demons coming and I, I recognize them as being swarms and herds and hordes of demons. But, you know, they didn't bother me too much. And that kind of, I think, is from having nightmares for so long that were so scary when I was younger for so many years. And I discussed that in the other video that in dreams like this, it's like you get accustomed to the fear. So I guess it's a way of having been made stronger in a sense. So, but I knew that it was time to like hit the road. So I, we, everyone starts moving and the demons were like, I'm not even gonna say what they look like because when it comes to those things, giving too much information um, can sometimes make people think that these things look like one way and it's not what I really go into too much. So all the people in the room start gathering their things and I am heading for the door and I'm not even aware that my twin flame is there, you know, and I, I grab my um, DS, my Nintendo DS, and I have a very s specific um, case for it. And this person tried to like take it, you know, a guy. I didn't know him, but I know that they were trying to steal from me. And so I smacked the guy in the face and I was kind of upset that I didn't get a good hit of him. <laughs> and, you know, Sorry, that was my dream, but, um, and then I pulled, like, this kind of thing over his face, like a, a hat or cloth, and then this other guy, like, totally knocked the guy out, and I was like, what is that, you know, and I only saw the person's head like the back of their head but then when I woke up I realized that this represented something in my life between my twin and I and ultimately that was my twin but I've had dreams like this in, in the past that I don't recognize him or he looks like someone else and sometimes I've even felt guilty like I was just dreaming about this other person like but then as I had more and more of these dreams, I um, realized after a frequency of them that it was him in the dreams. And then I started picking apart the subjects. And then I realized how closely they were related to things that I was like curious about or, you know, that I had insecurities about, things like that. So a lot of answers came, and this dream came after a, meditate, a meditative session yesterday. I did a guided meditation that I had stored on an old MP3 player of mine, and the meditation was for healing. And I did it right before I went to bed, and they mentioned, the woman who guides it mentions, you know, you may have dreams, and that's the purging. So this dream came right after that. And other times where I've just meditated by 
you know, silence or with music or just, you know, I guess in a more informal way. I've been having a lot of these dreams lately, especially since the beginning of the year. And if you watch my New Year's video, the dates of these readings and things like that, I've noticed, don't really matter too much. I used to think when watching other Twin Flame channels, like, if I miss the date for the reading, then it, you know, it's outdated and obsolete. But what I've noticed is when I watch my own videos, it's like a reminder to me about, like, certain truths, at least for me, you know, in my situation that sometimes I'll lose sight of later on. But then I get reminded and it becomes familiar. So I think it's the same thing with other people's channels. Um, and finding your like groove of channels is like very cool, you know, because we all kind of resonate in different ways. So, but with the higher self, um, not to get too off topic, um, it's an extension of your own being here, like in this realm, but it's a little bit more gentle, a little bit more informed, um, without reservation, without uh, apprehension, not to say you're just on it, dishonest here, but it has a little, it has more truth, you know, and sometimes like you can fill in the blank down here. I know I do with things that are kind of related to some sort of branching of fear. And when you kind of slow down and I made a video about that, like dark zone and the rainbow, I think the title of it is like, when you kind of allow yourself to think properly, because if you're all out of whack and angry and upset, it's harder to like understand and communicate effectively. I think that's in all regards, but especially in like these situations. But once you kind of like simmer down, as I like to say, you can discern things more clearly. And you just have to find your own way of getting through, but that, that higher self usually comes through with some sort of truth. And I'm a very shy person. Um, I think especially with my twin, because I can, I can get on, you know, video like this and be cool because I'm used to like film and filming and taking pictures and kind of like a social element. You know, I spent Fundamentally, you know, like art is my foundation, but to do art, you know, especially when you're figuring out like a new idea or what to do next, um, kind of need sometimes a job. So I spent a lot of the years bartending and even though I would get like social anxiety, I kind of like the showboat aspect of it. I like food and drinks most of all. But with bartending comes interaction with people. So between that and, you know, just doing it, like I developed a way of overcoming my shyness. And it's really just like a mode of acting, you know, like I just, it's not like I'm being fake, but I am getting past that little, that little mini hump of like, oh, I'm shy, I'm shy, I'm shy. But once I get over that, I'm totally cool. Video and stuff, like, I can deal, you know. It's like when performers say they can be in front of an audience of like millions or thousands or whatever and be okay. But when you're like in front of like an audience of like one, <laughs> it's like, oh. So, but, um, yeah, but I... I have a lot of shyness and with my twin, it comes out even more. And with that comes and 
apprehension and insecurities and things like that. But the higher self kind of helps me get out of my own head and closer to the truth. So to be able to understand your higher self more, and I'm not really all there yet. Who knows when I will be. But um, in order to like understand it more, you can ask questions, write letters to yourself or your twin. Journaling is another thing that I've done for a lot of years, um, ever since I was in my early teens, mid-teens especially, like maybe 15, 16, is when I was just journaling all the time. Um, I saw my father journaling around that time. And so, you know, there was, it was like a turbulent household. Um, in my other video of my qualifications of being a twin flame, I, I kind of discussed, you know, the front end, but the back end was when I, when everything started calming down and my dad became a devout Christian, he journaled a lot because my mom turned super, even more vicious because she wanted to get a divorce because she found him, she found check stubs of his that he gave to the church and she was abused in churches or Catholic boarding school when she was young. And so she forbade him to go from going to church. And she said, if you don't stop going to church, I'm going to divorce you. And he wouldn't give her a divorce. So for seven years, she would just tear into him. And all there was in my house was arguing from her to him. Because after a while, he stopped being the abusive one and she picked up and she's a special breed. Let's put it like that. So I follow suit. It, I follow suit to him journaling and I journaled every day alongside the Bible, but I would write down everything. You know, it's like when I moved to Los Angeles, I, the majority of the boxes I had were past journals. I didn't really have a mechanism of throwing them away at that point. But journaling, I think, really helped me get into tune with things. And now that I'm, I've realized that I'm in a twin flame situation and I've become part of everything fully, I am devoted to it. I continue to write um, in different ways. Um, but it's like when you become the third person, it becomes a little easier to like realize some things about yourself and your situation. And it helps you again get outside of your head because inside you have the emotional reaction, which is cool and sweet and nice. But sometimes it, I it can be irrational. I can be very hurt because, you know, I just get hurt. So usually I hurt myself, but <laughs> like I hurt my own feelings. Um, so that may help some of you guys. So some of you guys out there. So I hope that this video helps and trust your awareness and trust your intuition and, you know, whoever you pray to or whatever you believe in, just believe in the, you know, I won't get preachy. You guys know what I believe in. But when it comes to these things and trusting yourself, like a little, you know, prayer of help me trust this and be able to understand, like, what's happening um after that just kind of like letting go kind of helps because you can think like you know you can have all kinds of doubts and especially as you get deeper and deeper in I think because more awareness comes so I think the worst thing in that situation is to assume that you know everything 
because I've done that plenty and it's gotten me into trouble. So, you know, trouble meaning I can get a bit offensive. So, which is uncool. But, um, yeah, I'm really sorry about that. But, um, yeah. So, that's that for today's video. Um, I'll talk to you soon. Bye.